uh, next a member, a new member of both uh, committees, uh, Senator Padilla. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, there's been a lot of questions. I've been popping in and out from uh, multiple committees, but I understand there's uh, been a lot of questions already about intelligence, what was known. Uh, what was assessed, what was shared, uh, et cetera, and differing opinions. I'll try not to be too repetitive. First, a quick um, question for Chief Sund and the two uh, Sergeant at Arms. I imagine, uh, like most people, you saw most, if not all, of the House impeachment managers' presentations before the United States Senate uh, as they sort of laid, laid out the case set the impeachment question aside, we know how that was resolved, but in terms of how January 6th didn't just happen, but the lead up to January 6th, uh, is there anything from that presentation uh, that you would disagree with? So to just make sure I understand, the video I watched and all the information, the, the video that was portrayed is all accurate uh, video. As far as the, you know, any of the other uh, commentary associated with the video, uh, I can't say I watched every single bit of it, uh, but I can tell you the video, uh, a lot of that video was video from the United States Capitol Police, and it was all accurate. Okay, thank you. Mr. Stanger, Mr. Irving, same question. Uh, yeah, uh, the, uh, the video I saw certainly reflected what I could see from my window on the day of uh, January 6th. And from my perspective, Senator, I have not diagnosed the, uh, why the attack occurred. At the time, we left all information um, to the intelligence agencies that we had at the time. And I would say now to leave it to the after action investigations to make determinations. Okay. Uh, question for uh, Chief Sun specifically. Now, there is a, an intelligence division within the department, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, and now having read your letter uh, to Speaker Pelosi, you make reference to events on both November 14th as well as December 12th uh, that uh, you had sort of comparable intelligence in terms of risk assessment, threat assessment, uh, and the events of November 14th and December 12th not leading into anything near what uh, happened on January 6th. Is that my correct interpretation of your letter? Yes, that is the correct interpretation of the letter. Both the assessments indicated that we were going to have uh, various militia groups um, and extremists uh, in attendance. Right. Uh, in addition to the fact that, uh, as uh, Chief Conti had uh, testified to earlier, uh, weapons were recovered uh, during both those events. Okay. And so, uh, to the best of your recollection, in the lead up to January 6th, since it was comparable assessment, comparable intelligence, roughly, uh, you therefore proceeded with comparable preparation and posture. Yeah, that is that is absolutely correct. We proceeded with the posture of seeing it could have uh, instances of violence. We knew it was going to be focused on uh, the Capitol. We knew that there was going to be members of Proud Boy, Antifa uh, participating, and like I'd said before, not Capitol Police, not Metropolitan Police, not any of our federal agencies had any information we were going to be facing an armed insurrection of thousands of people. Now, if we take uh, our experience with uh, terrorism globally uh, and look at case studies, uh, both incidents that were have been prevented and those that were successfully executed against the United States, uh, is it plausible, and I know hindsight's 2020, is it plausible that the November 14th, December 12th incidents may well have been trial runs. The very extremist organizations you've referenced uh, involved with the organizing and participation of November 14th, December 12th, to gain counterintelligence on how you and your partner agencies would be planning and preparing for such incidents. Well, as you rightly point out, when you look at some of the uh, uh, terrorist attacks that have occurred, there has been uh, pre-planning, there has been pre-surveillance, uh, pre-collection of intelligence on the security features. Uh, I don't know if the uh, November and December 
were two instances of that, but I would suspect with the fact that we're finding this was a coordinated attack, I wouldn't doubt there was um, pre-surveillance. So we don't know they were, we don't know they weren't. That's my Correct. point. Correct. Uh, and I know the intelligence folks will be here at a subsequent hearing, but we're, we're all in this together. In your letter and your uh, testimony earlier today, you uh, bluntly said the intelligence community missed this. That is correct, sir. That's a way I feel. Now, who was commander in chief? on December 6th. When you say commander in chief? Who was the president of the United States? Uh, Donald Trump, sir. Overseeing the, the intelligence community that missed this. Repeat your answer. For the, the entire 18 agencies that represent the intelligence community? Yes. Yes, sir, they would be commander in chief. And who was that again? Uh, president Donald Trump. Okay. Uh, let me ask a couple questions on a different topic. Uh, I think it's uh, obvious to many across the country. I was one of three senators who was not in chambers on January 6th. I had uh, you know, the, the benefit, if you will, of watching the events occur in real time, both inside the Capitol and outside the Capitol on television. One thing that was not lost on me and many people that I've talked to is uh, the difference in both police presence and response on January 6th compared to uh, events from last summer when peaceful protesters were demonstrating in the nation's capital in the wake of George Floyd's murder. Uh, last summer, they were met with significant force. Uh, a couple of data points to date, some 250 individuals who were involved in the Capitol insurrection of January 6th have been arrested. More will likely be arrested in the coming weeks and months, but only a small number, about 52 of these individuals were arrested on January 6th. By contrast, during the largely peaceful protest of last summer, 427 people were arrested. On January, excuse me, on June 1st alone, 289 people were arrested. Similarly, some 300 protesters were arrested during uh, the Kavanaugh hearings in 2018. So, uh, question, Mr. Sun, how, can you tell us exactly how? the Capitol Police preparations for January 6th differed from preparations for the protests from last summer. And if you can specifically address if they were the same or different use of Ford guidelines in place on January 6th compared to the protests of last summer or any criteria for making arrests on January 6th versus the protests from last summer. Okay, and if you could do that in about a minute. Uh, 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 yes, ma'am. Thank you, Senator. I, I will do that very concisely. Uh, okay. So I want to look at it from planning and preparations. We plan for every demonstration the exact same way. Doesn't matter the, the message of the, uh, of the person, doesn't matter the demographics of the grievance involved in the demonstration. We do it the exact same way. We develop our information, we develop our intel, and we base a response plan on that. So let's transition to preparations. I, I will tell you we handled 15 um, um, major demonstrations involving Black Lives Matters groups, you know, following the, the death of George Floyd over the summer. We had a total of six arrests, six arrests, no use of less lethal capabilities, no use of lethal force capabilities. The uh, events, the everything that we put into place for January 6th far exceeded any planning that we did for any events in, 20, in, in 2020. With the full activation of the department, the size of the perimeter that we expanded, the deployment of additional um, protective equipment, the deployment of uh, uh, less lethal and the application of less lethal, uh, with far exceeded anything, uh, any other event that I can recollect on the nation's capital. Uh, so I'll just leave it at that. We, we provided you. and prepared much more. Thank you. Uh, we're going to go and thank you, Senator Padilla.